Okay, my friends, you are in for a treat today. We are going to talk about the Velikovsky affair, which you probably never heard of Emanuel Velikovsky, who is my personal hero and probably will be your personal hero after you hear what they did to him and what he discovered and what has been denied for the last 70 plus years. This was 1950. He wrote the book Worlds in Collision. Listen to this. All right, in an attempt to revitalize Velikovsky's reputation, I wrote this book about minds in collision. His was worlds in collision. Well, it is the minds that are in collision that are destroying reality. You see this? This is the New York Times. They destroyed Velikovsky, absolutely destroyed him. And then after all the information was in, they came, Velikovsky's right. The supporters saying with renewed conviction, they argue recent discoveries in space, and this is back in the 1960s, I think, uh, demonstrated at the least that his cataclysmic concept of the world's history must be taken seriously. Among these discoveries, they say by the writings of Emanuel Velikovsky, are the Van Allen radiation belts around the Earth, the solar wind, the radio emissions of Jupiter, high temperature of Venus, all kinds of things he predicted came true. And this is way back, I don't know when this was written, uh, 66, October 66. Since then, 100% of what he said has been shown to be true. And my research has proven even above what he said is true. <laughs> what he said was so so incredible that everybody just laughed at him and, and destroyed him, literally destroyed his life. And, um, and of course, they did the same thing to me, but I have the evidence that I can stand behind. He had all of the ancient documents that he just laughed at. I have physical bones and body parts and DNA and CAT scans. It's over. I guess this all the time. You can't get blood out of a rock. I talked to David Reich at Harvard seven years ago. You can't get blood out of rocks. We're not going to have any more conversation because it's just impossible. Well, no. Derek Briggs from Yale, same thing. Impossible. You're wrong. No. I, I have blood coming out. I'm literally gushing out of alveoli in some of my samples. You see this? That's a lung. And what happens is they turn, the quartz fills in the holes and voids. And the voids were where the holes in your lungs are where the oxygen goes. And in this condition, when, when the pleura, which is the coating of the outside, goes away. See how red this was, brand new? Now, when the coating goes away, silicates invade. If the coating doesn't go away, basalts invade. And it's, be, and it's it, due to the conditions that were here in Connecticut, where I am. And this is blood. It came out of that rock. So don't tell me you can't get blood out of rocks. And then again, like a bone like this, you get all the blood you want out of there. Because on the outside, it doesn't look like there's any blood. It's saturated with blood inside. And if you think I'm kidding, let me just show you something real quick here. All right. This is... And this, I, I think it might have been this bone, I don't know, it was one of these bones. They have what they call bone foramen, which have vessels, blood vessels in them, and they have nerves running through them to connect to the next bones. And they have these little cavities, and they've come up through there. Now, there's where the scab was. Watch this. I took the scab off. You see the scab? Underneath, this is what's called fibrin. <laughs> it's a clotting fiber that makes a web so that your blood cells can collect in there and create the scab and that's what it was now where did the blood come from well i'm glad you asked because it came right out of these two holes after i took all the stuff away that's the vein and that's the black blood this is the red blood see it up here you got a little bit that's the red blood which is the um artery side so you got a vein side and you got an artery side the vein is the used blood the artery side is the fresh blood so it is. So these things, this is not silly. This is not a joke. And we have even new species. That were, like he said, there were species wiped out. Maybe it was one of these, no toes. We have the no toes that are, this is a foot. This is not a, a shoe. This is a guy's foot. And his toes are inside and they have springs instead of tendons inside. <laughs> so it's time to start paying a little bit of attention my good friends. All right, I'll put a link to Brian's uh, uh, video here. He just put this up 15 hours ago, but it goes back 11 years ago. And he's trying to come, he's asking, and I love his work, he's asking, how can we understand this? This is way up in the mountains of Peru.
And I, I have all kinds of evidence to show that these were living creatures, and I'll, I'll be showing that in pretty good detail. Well, I have forever, but um, I don't know if in this video I'll go into more of that, but we got to go through Velikovsky's account of how these events occurred. How did that boil? Why did that burn like that? Maybe a comet almost hit the Earth. You ever think of that? <laughs> All right, you ready? Here it goes. This is as the comet almost hit the Earth. Here, under the impact of the gaseous part of the comet, the drift of air attracted by the body of the comet and the rush of the atmosphere resulting from inertia when the Earth stopped rotating or shifted its poles, all contributed to produce hurricanes of enormous velocity and force and of worldwide dimensions. Manuscript Troano and other documents of the Mayas describe a cosmic catastrophe during which the ocean fell on the continent and a terrible hurricane swept the earth. The hurricane broke up and carried away all towns and all forests, exploding volcanoes, tides sweeping over mountains, and impetuous winds threatened to annihilate humankind, and actually did annihilate many species of animals. The face of the earth changed, mountains collapsed, other mountains grew and rose over the onrushing cataract of water driven from oceanic spaces, numberless rivers lost their beds, and a wild tornado moved through the debris descending from the sky. The end of the world age was caused by Huracan, the physical agent that brought darkness and swept away houses and trees and even rocks and mounds of earth. From this name is derived hurricane, the word we use for a strong wind. Huracan destroyed the major part of the human race. In the darkness swept by wind, resinous stuff fell from the sky and participated with fire and water in the destruction of the world. For five days, save for the burning naphtha and burning volcanoes, this is after the, the comet had caused its devastation on the Earth. And it could have been right while the impact of the two atmospheres were, were mixing. And, you know, of course, it would co cause a tremendous amount of, of heat. And they say that the skies literally combusted. Now, there were certain areas on the Earth that were infected different than others because it's spinning as this is approaching. And at one point, it, 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 it literally stopped the Earth. Now, for some reason where I am, everything is mud fossils. And I don't find that everywhere because there's a whole lot of different types of chemistry going on all around the Earth during this event and where I am the chemistry was absolutely flawless for 100 percent preservation and I mean a hundred percent even like my goose friend here there's his feathers on his back back of his head there's a goose this side is flat as a pancake because everything I have died in the flood and again it, and here's a, a lung hold on that's a human lung. It's been DNA tested and CAT scanned and anatomist verified and 100%. And the same thing, flatter than a pancake on the back because it died flat like this. Now, how come it's out of, out of its body? Why is it just laying here as a lung? The body's boiled, literally boiled. So they're parboiled and the flesh fell away and turned into mud. <laughs> it turned into the clay and the mud. The red clays and the red mud are flesh. And these body organs that were encapsulated with carriages and collagens and all that, they bonded with aluminum silicates. Every bit of feldspar and every single thing there is, it, they, all these rocks are coated with feldspar. Inside is basalts. Where the guy's neck was is basalts. And there's the, vein, the artery right there. I've, I've done this for many years now. I understand this extremely well. I have DNA tests, three of them done, and I have giants. All of this stuff that was talked about in the past, I have verified is true. And I have the physical evidence of the DNA tests. These can be retested. Some people, oh, you can't test that. Oh, yeah, well, you can test it yourself. All you got to do is drill in 
And I drilled in down here somewhere, I think it was right there, to get a, a sample of the blood. And down here it's saturated with blood. When I first took this underground, it was just almost blood dripping out of it. And I had some that blood really did drip out. Just to show you that, so to verify what I'm saying. Then we're going to finish up with um, Mr. Velikovsky here. And what you need to do is re do this whole thing. Oh, man, it'll blow your mind right out of your head. Absolutely unbelievable. And then he's got other ones, uh, Ages in Chaos and uh, um, Akhenaten, I think. He goes right into the Egypt. He follows the history of the texts. The texts, the carvings, the, the cartouches, the tablets, the statues, all of these etchings. He's, he went through the history and didn't laugh at it. He's, he made, what did this guy say over in India? What did they say in China? What did they say in South America? What did they say over here? All the same stories, all the same dates. You know, I mean, there, obviously there were little glitches here and there that, you know, you may have a hard time trying to figure out, but... They were written by different people in different areas that were not even connected in any way whatsoever. They were totally disparate from each other. So they had no way of saying, oh, well, that guy said this or this guy said that. They said what they said. This guy said what he said. They just happened to match. Okay, what you have to remember is this was 1950, Velikovsky put out his book. There was no Google Earth. There was none of that stuff. Well, now we can see down from space and see what is on the Earth. And guess what is on the earth? The things that they wrote about in the ancient texts. Dragons attacking giant fish. That's a giant fish right there. You take your time and look at it. You can see that that's what that is. Now the eyeball is right here. That's not the eyeball. I believe the eyeball is right there. All right. Everything's a little bit obscured, yes. But this is not obscured at all, really. This is the dragon's head. Follow that down, that's his neck, runs all the way down. This is the throat, the actual literal throat, and we're going to come in and see it, and it's got all dragon scales. This is his head, and he's spitting out all this stuff on top of that fish. All right, so this is the lay of the land. That dragon runs all the way across North Africa, all the way out to here. And I will show you, these are the, well, I'll show you right now. These are the dragon scales towards the end of his tail. All right, you see this stuff running off? That's bloody, uh, what they call um, the you know body fluids that run out as a dead creature decays. And this can't, can't have been all that long ago. Now, pay close attention. This is his tail. This is way to hell over here. Let's go way, 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 way back here to his head that's spitting out this noxious stuff right here you see that he's spitting out all that stuff at that fish and he actually hit the fish in the back in its back right here and ate into the vital flesh and if you look at this closely that's just not run off of dirt and debris that is actually eaten into the flesh and these are the little blood vessels and so forth that are in flesh are, this is exactly what is in tissues. Every single bit of this had to be serviced with blood to when it was alive. And I, I can't account for how big they are and why they're this way. And, you know, it was all written, though, about dragons and monsters. And they actually even have coins, gold coins, showing the f dragon attacking a fish from ancient, I don't know, Greece or somewhere. But here's the throat. Uh, I just want you to understand, this is real. This is not a joke. That's that fluffy nose that they have. Here's the little things that they have coming down from their chins. And this is where all that dragon stuff comes from. You see that? These are the little squirrely things they have coming down right from the bottom of their throats. And they all have that little fluty stuff coming down. Then, down, running down the side. You see this? You see these in the parades in China and Japan and places like that where they revere dragons. I think they do. I'm not going to say who did what, but I'm going to show you what's here. Now, so there's his head. There's his dragon spit. It's identical to um, snake venom, basically. There's the throat all the way down. This is effluent. This is runoff of body fluids. All right, let's look at close. 
right, again, this is the throat, and this is where the injectors start injecting all that poison. Now, this is going down his throat. You see, keep your eye on the dragon scales, which protect his throat. You don't want your throat getting cut. But that did actually happen here. Now, all of that is the dragon's throat. And this is called the drac Draco or something like that, Draco Basin. And it's the dragon's throat. You see all these scales? That's not just some kind of geological formation other than the fact that it was at one time biological. Now, yes, I'll, I'll say it's geological because it just happens to be part of the earth. But those are dragon scales and they are plates that allow the thing to move and hinge on each one of those little plates. And you can see that this is the effluent running off of the body. This is what they call bodily fluid effluent. It's a, a coroner, an atom, uh, anatomist, uh, autopsy anatomist, they notice exactly, there's no question whatsoever what that is. It's red and black blood, and the red blood, the you know, the reddish looking blood is the artery blood, and the black looking, looking blood is the vein blood. But this is not, that's pretty hard to miss. If you miss this, and you can just dismiss that, then I dismiss you, because you don't care about reality. You, you just, uh, it's nothing, go away. And that's what I hear from the, the geologists. They, they are so freaked out about this. I don't blame them. If I went and paid a ton of money to have somebody tell me a bunch of stuff wasn't true, I would be upset too. But they're upset so they, because they've done that already and now they're in that position and they just want to stay in lost land so that they can be happy. You know, they're PhDs, perfectly happy, deluded. This was cut. That throat was cut. And this is where it really ran out. This was, and it says in the ancient text, he will cut the dragon's throat that lives in the sea with his great and mighty sword. And boy, I'll tell you, that had to be pretty great and mighty because that is just cut right across. And it's exactly what it says in the ancient text. And the ancient maps show this dragon on here with gold scales running all the way back to exactly where it is. And there's a gash right in there. <laughs> And Atlantis is over here because this was Atlantis. It collapsed. All that mud ran out. You see that? And they don't even realize that ran out there. They say there was an offshore collapse that caused this flat plain out here. No, it was all the mud ran out. Get a kid. They can tell them how mud works. And this was Atlantis, and it was right outside the Straits, but not the Straits of Gibraltar. These Straits right here. This is what people never go back and look at the ancient texts and try to understand what they're actually saying. They have dismissed them so quickly that there is no inspection and no thought whatsoever given to this. I've been showing this for 10 years. No, well, not this particular, well, seven years, this. And um, <laughs> as far as academia goes, they could care less about reality. No concern whatsoever for reality there. All right, here's what really freaked them out when I started to present my evidence. I said, I have giants. <laughs> I should have never said that because this is a giant fingertip. Now, I don't know exactly the dimensions. I was just freaked out when I was measuring it, but this is the fingernail. This is a little pad that bumps up against your next bone so that they don't get torn up. Now, I think it was about 30 inches, something like that, front to back. This has been DNA tested, and how I DNA tested it was I broke a piece off right here, right on the edge of the fingernail, and I, to get down inside to get some blood out of there, because this was pretty well, you know, um, weathered. But you could still see the fingernail, and it was in good shape. And I, I actually went out there the other day, um, to check on some stuff. I'll explain that in a minute, but this is the fingernail, and when I broke off the f side, it still has fingerprints on it, just like you have on the side of your finger fingernail. If you look right on the edge of your fingernail, same thing. Here's, here's what it looks like. All right. If um, up in here was where the fingernail was, and as it comes around the edge of your finger, it starts to get into this grip skin, which is this this is the ridges, skin ridges, and my thumb is about the width of one ridge on a fingerprint. All right, so now this is really dense, 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 and that's this highly keratinized, really rubbery, hard skin. That's what protects you from the rest of the world, and this is what you're gripping all your grip skin. Now, 
and it peeled right off like that. This is, the layer underneath it just popped right off. When I smacked it, bip, it popped off just like that. Now, um, and again, this was DNA tested. And on top of that, I had another giant here, which had a, about a three foot wide hand. And that's this one. And this is the same thing. See the grip skin? That peels off too. This was, this was only like, I don't know, 16th of an inch thick or something. The other one was like this thick, just the skin. And this is the pad that runs around. It's a left hand. You just take your time and look at it. That is the, if you put yours out like that, you have another one of those. The same thing if, you know, if your hand's normal. <laughs> and the other one goes this way, your, your bumper pad on the bow. Now, and then there is that crease right in the between. You see it? Right there. And the thumb was was off this way. And I have the thumb here, and that was DNA tested. Here it is right here. Hold on. This was CAT scan DNA tested, all that stuff, all back in seven years ago. And this has been refused by academia to to even look at it. Now, that smacks of a major problem with the educational system, and there is an issue that they may face here, and, I, and it's not my fault. It's their fault for not doing their job. All right, I did my homework. I don't think they're doing their job. They didn't do their job. They should have looked at this. These are DNA tests. I had three, th three different things tested, and two of them were giants, and that's what freaked them out. And they, it was excellent quality DNA was taken because I took it right out of the blood. And they were homo sapien mitochondrial DNA. And this goes all the way down. And the lab stands behind the, the results, ex except that they want to be sure that you realize I couldn't ship those giant fingertips and all that stuff to them. I, I extracted the DNA myself under the extreme precautions. And I have them here. They can be tested. I'm not hiding anything. So if you, you because that's all I've ever heard is, oh, you must have contaminated, you must have done this. And the people from Harvard and Yale and everybody, all of them, even Johns Hopkins, I went to, a, took a course with, uh, I think it's Stephen Salzberg. Salzberg was his professor. He dismissed this instantaneously and just, you know, nobody wanted to talk to him about it because they just said, no, you can't get this DNA from rocks. And I said, these are body parts. They're not just rocks. And boop, done, case is closed. Get out of town. All right, this is that lung that I showed you before. And this is in the area where I took the test, the blood test out of it. When I say I extracted the DNA, that's not what I did. I extracted the blood samples. And you see where it is here? Now we're going to look at it up in the microscope. That's what it is. I mean, it's just basically solid blood. Now, where's my little scraper here? Hold on. Oh, watch. You see in there? What you did, all you have to do is take a little drill. You see that? Look, look at this. You think I can't get blood out of that? You can't, they can't get DNA out of that? Look. All you normally would do is take a drill and drill down in there. But I have it right here on my thing. That's enough right there to test. They don't need a ton of it. I drilled a drill down through something on the other side. But it was just through the same stuff. I know where the blood is. I didn't, I'm not an idiot. I used gloves and I used all that stuff. There was no contamination that they could find. It was, it was, they did, um, I don't know what they call it. But anyway, he said it was dense and it was exactly as advertised. All right, these are, this is the best place basically there is to get top quality CAT scans and so forth. They do for the big major companies all over the world. And, um, I mean, look at this. <laughs> so, I had them, well, they actually donated seven CAT scans to this research. And I, I Jesse I, and Fabio, I worked with them. Absolutely the nicest people you could ever want to work with. And if you ever need any really good quality CAT scans and all this stuff, and, um, I mean, they're just amazing. So, anyway, they do industrial, they do oh, the whole nine yards. And they did seven CAT scans for me. Now, unfortunately, mud fossils don't lend themselves well to CAT scans. Let me show you one of them. Okay, I, I know I showed you this fingertip. Hold on. That, 
this fingertip right here, and this is what we're going to be seeing, but we're going to be seeing it from the back. Now, I broke off this piece just to look inside and see what I could find. Now, here's what it was. They do a surface scan, and then they do the internal scan, all kind of stuff. You see this, this structure right here, this round thing, and the central part, and then that little spot underneath? And you see over here that round thing in the central spot and that little dot underneath? One of them's black and one of them's red, although you can't see the colors, but you can see the contrast. This is the arterial side, and that is a, a tendon. And that is the vein side, and this is also a tendon. This is the bone. It's offset because of thumb. You see how my thumb is offset? You see how the left side sticks off to the left, and, and the other side is pretty much flat straight? Well, that's because your bone on your thumbs don't match right in the center. So this is a thumb. Now, uh, let's see. As I was showing here in this one, let me jump to something. Oh, there it go. Now, looking from the bottom, here's the problem with mud fossils. They are nucleophilically invaded and substituted. Well, what does that mean? Well, what it means is the fleshy tissue that was in here, whatever it was, I don't care if it was calcium, bone, and flesh, and tendons, and muscle, it doesn't matter. These little molecules work their way in, and they have these, hold on, let me turn lights on so that we can see things. They have what they call transition metals in them, in the waters. These are aqueous solution transition metals, and as they move through, they bond and they add molecules to the degradable stuff because they're soaked in salty salt gives you a lot of NaCl okay you got all kinds of interactions between those two salt is the one that really get, lets you you move molecules and then these do the moving and then they they st stabilize and uh, that's why you find copper and iron and, and all these different things in different places because they were literally in the blood and they stabilize and th in specific gravity because of this flood. They separate out just like they precipitate out in beakers when they do different solutions to see the, m the don't worry about it, they separate out. <laughs> This here, now look very, 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 very carefully. Don't take your eyes off the prize. And what is the prize? Well, the prize in front of your eyes is that circle that was the bone in the thumb. Now, what else can we see that makes sense? But you see, you can see it. You just barely see it. That's why, oh, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. Just a shadow. Well, no, it isn't. And these are not just holes, those are blood vessels. All right? But other than that, you don't get a whole lot out of it. You know, I can't dismiss that. That's true. You can see the fingernail almost perfectly. Hold on, let me see if I can find that shot. All right, this is not too bad. You can see where the fingernail was. Came right up the side like that. And that's the that big fingertip. Now, a little back here further. You can see this one. Now, if you take your own thumb and you put it out like that, you're going to have that bump. You see that bump right there? You're going to have the same thing. And, th and then that was where the finger tip, fingernail was. So it's time to take a look at this stuff. I don't want to be nasty about it. I can work with anybody as long as they'll work with me. But that's not what I found. It, right across the board in geology, in any, any university whatsoever. So I say they're academics and they have an obligation. So I think it's time to step up, guys. That's all I'm asking for. I'm, I'm willing to work with anybody without prejudice. Thank you. I love you all. Okay, my friends, this is ties so much together. This is a video Brian Forrester did 11 years ago, and it is about, he's trying to, he asks questions about all of these ancient megalithic sites, and I have a lot of information I'd love to share with him. Now, this, you're looking at this, how did that happen? Why did this turn black like that in that one spot? And these, you know, it's not everywhere. There's a few spots. I know why. Because these bricks are not made of just stone. That was nothing. These bricks are made from living body parts. And that was filled with blood. That was a blood vessel. Just like something like this. When you heat it up, where there's blood, it explodes. Literally explodes. 
That was from, this is, is a different situation, but it is the same story. When you boil blood, it literally explodes, and that's what happened there. And all of the giant creatures on Earth, the same thing happened to them. They, they burnt up and boiled, and in some areas, they didn't burn quite like other areas, and this is the area that I am in. 100% preservation in this area. Absolutely total, complete, and exquisite preservation. Even geese, giants, bones, lungs, DNA tested. All right, here we go.